All right, what up, everybody? It's me, Omega Pro, and I am here with a brand new Persona video. So I just recently beat Persona 3 Reload, and the entire playthrough is up here on this channel right now. You can go ahead and watch that if you'd like. And I loved Persona 3 Reload so much. I mean, I knew that I would. I mean, Persona 3, my favorite game of all time, Tell you beat. But Persona 3 Reload was such a great experience that I still wanted more Persona. So I decided to play some Persona 5 Royal on my PlayStation, boot that back up, and see how the game felt after playing Persona 3 Reload. Now, first and foremost, to answer the, the uh, question in the title of this video, Yes, Persona 5 holds up. It's one of the best RPGs ever made. And even though I prefer Persona 3 Reload, I think there'll still be a lot of people that prefer Persona 5 over it. And I wouldn't even necessarily say you're wrong for that. I would just say that you're very wrong for that, boy. No, but seriously, Persona 5 is absolutely worth playing. If you just beat Persona 3 Reload and that was your first Persona game, do yourself a favor, get Persona 5, make sure it's the royal version and fucking enjoy yourself. You're about to lock in. Uh, I will just go ahead and say that I personally think that Persona 5 Royal is a little too long. My playthrough was 157 hours uh, by the time I beat uh, that game, which is pretty much double the length of Persona 3 Reload. So just keep that in mind. Um, but other than that, just lock in. You're about to have a great experience. But how does Persona 5 Royal hold up after playing Persona 3 Reload. So this video will contain no spoilers for either game. I'm just gonna mainly talk about the main gameplay loop because I have a lot of opinions on that. So I will be making another video going deep into my thoughts on Persona 3 Reload and talking about the criticisms of that game and what I liked about that game, but that's not for right now. I still need to gather all my thoughts and easily lay those out for you guys. But when it comes to Persona 3 Reload versus 5, uh, I think that there are some similarities that I saw people complaining about with Persona 3 Reload that I believe Persona 5 has as well. I saw a lot of people complaining about Persona 3 Reload's slower start, and this one doesn't make too much sense to me because the thing that I liked about Persona 3 Reload is that it lets you play the game very early on. Like within the first two hours, you're already going through the gameplay loop of doing your social links, increasing your stats or going to Tartarus if you feel like it. And I really appreciated that. Whereas the first few hours of Persona 5 Royal are pretty much all railroad and handholdy. And it's pretty much a big tutorial. And you don't really get that freedom in the game for, you know, a few more hours than you do in Persona 3 Reload. Now on this playthrough, I did choose merciless mode i am on new game plus as well and i have to say um i am skipping through pretty much all the dialogue and the early parts and just letting the good cutscenes play out you know the cutscenes that i know i'm going to really want to uh watch but you know I, with skipping all the cutscenes and stuff like that and skipping through the dialogue it does go by fast but it's still kind of crazy to me how like I'm skipping all this stuff and it's like the, the, the cutscenes are still like a minute long while I'm in fast forward mode. Like that shit is crazy. That means that they're just really out here yapping, bro. Like it is what it is. But I will say on first playthrough, that stuff really isn't that big of a deal. It's really on repeat playthroughs that that stuff gets annoying. But luckily we do have the fast forward feature so you can just skip through that. I kind of wish we just had a straight up skip feature instead of fast forward. But I get that, you know, you have to chime in and, you know, choose your dialogue options and stuff like that. And I, I understand why it's fast forward instead of skipping. But furthermore, from that, we have the the combat right and now. I haven't gotten too into the combat and I'm also not summoning like super strong personas because I'm still early on in the game. But I am playing on Merciless and even using personas that are along that level i gotta say that i really have been enjoying the merciless experience in persona 5 royal because of the fact that not only do like i hit extremely hard and that feels very satisfying but so do the opponents right it forces you to think tactically and to also make sure that you're not making that many mistakes because even in merciless with a lot of experience and even using stronger personas you can still get one shot, you know, and you could get a party wave. Now, that hasn't happened to me yet because I'm just that talented of a gamer. You feel what I'm saying, baby girl? But I have gotten even, you know, uh, uh, guarding with my party members still getting one shot 
You know, and you know, there's this one opponent in the in the first Kamashita Palace that uses charge. I think it's Barith that uses charge and then does like a lunge attack. And even when I'm guarding, it's still one shot Morgana. And I was like, oh wait, hold on. I wasn't familiar with your game. Like, hold on, wait a minute. You know, I was like, okay, okay, that, that's pretty fine. Because, you know, in Persona 5 Royal, I think like my whole playthrough of that game, I probably died three times max. And I still haven't taken a death. Uh, like a, a party wipe yet in Persona 5 Royal, but you know, I've had a couple close situations, a couple close calls. I was like, okay, wait a minute, perhaps I misjudge you, perhaps I wasn't familiar with your game. And I will also say this uh, when it comes to uh, the visual style of Persona 5 Royal, some of the personas look so good in Royal. And I, I understand that I'm pretty sure they're using the same models, but for some reason, there's something about whether it's the art style or whatever it may be. There's something about Royal where some of them looked like better or more fluid. Like the one that I can think of is uh, the Persona Rangda. I thought they looked really, really good in Persona 5 Royal, but they didn't look all that crazy to me in Reload. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe it's like some lighting thing going on. I don't really know. But Beyond that, I would say that Persona 3 Reload is actually the much better looking game. And I really underestimated or like, I guess, swept under the rug how good Reload looks. Because going back to Persona 5 Royal, of course, I'm playing on, you know, my PlayStation, which is the PS4 version of the game. So it's running at 30 FPS instead of 120, which I was running, you know, Persona 3 Reload. Persona 3 Reload also has ray tracing and it's up, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm playing it at like 4K or whatever. And it looks really, really good. Whereas on Persona 5, it's still 1080p, 30 FPS, you know, doesn't look the best, no ray tracing or whatever. And I really underestimated how much I would appreciate having high frame rates in a Persona game. Playing that game at 30 FPS has been an adjustment and a half. In, in my opinion, like this, uh, over everything else, I feel like getting reacclimated to the 30 FPS has been the hardest uh, uh, adjustment for me because the game feels like sluggish. Like the animations look silky smooth. Like everything looks super smooth. But like when you have the controller in your hand and you're moving around, it just feels weird. You feel like you're almost like it feels like you almost have like an input delay because of the 30 FPS. And that's been probably the biggest adjustment for me so far. Another thing that I was really, really shocked at is I just finished, you know, the Kamoshida Palace and I'm currently waiting for, you know, his change of heart to take place or whatever. And my God, there is like nothing to do. Like, I know a lot of people say that about Persona 3 Reload, and that's a very valid criticism for that game. But at least in Persona 3 Reload, I feel like within the first couple of hours, you have like a ton of school social links you can do. I mean, you have Kenji, you have Kaz, you have Yuko, you've got uh, uh, the, the student council club and stuff like that. Like you got options there's Chihiro as well you have Bunkichi and Mitsuo you know you got options but yo there's like nothing to do like if Ryuji or An don't want to hang out with me then all I really got is Tei Takemi which you know I'm not necessarily mad at you know Shay, how you doing baby girl <laughs> I'm a little sick <laughs> do, I, do you have some Robitussin <laughs> But outside of that, like, Sojiro don't fuck with me. Sojiro don't want to hang out with me half the goddamn time. So I only have his social link at, at one because he don't he don't rock with me. He thinks I'm a delinquent. He thinks I'm a thug. You feel me? Uh, Tay Takemi, you know, I hang out with any opportunity I get. But outside of that, like, I'm pretty much going home and sleeping. Now, I understand this is mainly because I'm on New Game Plus, right? So obviously, I have all my social stats maxed. So I don't need to go uh, you know, eat some beef bowls or eat, you know, do the burger challenges or whatever. So obviously there's going to be just a lot less for me to do in general. But I feel like a lot of people really like doing replays of Persona games. And it's always been something that's been hard for me to do, especially like New Game Plus, because like you're you got all your stats up and all that stuff. You can choose between any Persona. So I'm going to leave this to you guys here. What are your opinions like or what are your what's your advice for doing new game plus in persona games? Like what should I be doing? You know, because I'm not really 
I'm not really too sure what the fuck I'm even supposed to be doing. Also, what's up with this light? I didn't even notice this. Yeah, because I'm just like, I'm just like counting down the days until I can unlock the metaverse and stuff like that. And is that really what I'm supposed to do in Persona 5 Royal? Because like, I really want to play the game and I want to do the dungeon crawling. I want to go to, I want to go to the metaverse. I want to go to, you know, do the palaces or, you know, stuff like that. But like, it, you just you just can't yet you know and i feel like this game like gates you off from doing so much which is why the criticism of persona 3 reload in that it starts slow doesn't make sense to me because here i am playing persona 5 royal and i literally can't do shit like at least in persona 3 reload if i didn't want to you know increase one of my stats or you know if there wasn't a social link to do i could at least go to tartarus and fight shit and fuse personas and do all that stuff but i can't even do that because there literally is nowhere for me to go i beat the palace i beat kamashita's palace there's no metaverse for me to go to so i just have to wait until the game allows me to go to the metaverse now again this isn't the worst thing in the world in fact it's not even a problem on first playthrough but revisiting it i would say it is a problem and even you know if I were to not be on New Game Plus, I would still be running into the same issue of like, okay, well, I guess I'll just get my guts up or I'll get my academics or knowledge up or whatever. Like, but I want to have the option of like, if I want to replay Persona 5 to get into that nitty gritty gameplay, then I want that because that still feels really good about Persona 5. The gameplay is still top tier now it's been an adjustment period to me because in persona 3 reload i feel like these characters had like you know these really specific builds like like junpei's like crit heavy build i thought was really really dope and then of course you have uh uh mitsuru which has the status ailments and and things like that but when it comes to uh persona 5 royal i'm not there yet you know people don't have their builds yet and i'm like oh my god and i'm looking at my persona builds and look man i getting into persona 3 reload i feel like i had some really cracked persona builds and i'm what i'm really trying to look for in persona 5 i'm trying to look for a physical powerhouse around level 20 that can like do crits and shit like that i'm looking at all my builds i'm like i'm like damn like is it like did persona 5 not have like you know heavy crit builds or did i just not build any crit fucking personas and now i'm mad at my past self because i'm like you dumbass like you didn't have any crit builds crit builds are so fun that was one of my favorite things to do in persona 3 reload was doing the crit build with like siegfried and stuff like that or like you know getting the crits with junpei having koromaru use uh use uh what's it called retribution or whatever to, to increase the crits or whatever like i miss that so much and I wanted to do that again in Persona 5 and now I'm kicking myself in the ass because I guess when I beat Persona 5 Royal the first time I didn't invest in any crit personas at least not in the early game I got some later game personas but I don't really want to use those now I mean it's too early to use those right so I, yeah I'm feeling just very conflicted on that mad at myself but yeah so if you guys got any good uh suggestions for early game persona builds or something like that you know let me know uh what you think is the most fun what personas you had the most fun with on a replay through uh primarily also again i am playing on merciless mode so if you guys have any advice for a person playing merciless mode for the first time doing a new game plus for the first time let me know uh, i've been having a lot of fun you know, just going back to Persona 5, honestly, like I talk so much shit about pretty much every Persona game that isn't three because, you know, I'm a little biased. I'm a W dick writer. What are you going to do about it? Kiss me on the lips. But yeah, so going back to Persona 5, I mean, like, damn, I'm always going to love going back to a Persona game, no matter what it is. I'm always going to have fun doing it. But yeah, anyways, yes, I do think Persona 5 Royal holds up pretty well, even after playing Persona 3 Reload. I still think Persona 3 Reload is a much more fun game and i really like that game the only thing that i could say is that uh having the palaces and metaverse is probably going to be very preferable to a lot of people over tartarus i still think that's the case even though they improve tartarus a lot in persona 3 reload i still feel like the majority of people will have preferred going through the metaverse and uh and going through i keep calling it the metaverse it's the mementos i know i got a comment or 300 in the in the comments being like um actually it's mementos not metaverse the metaverse is actually the just the realm that you go to when you go into the mementos you fucking noob get off my dick yes when you go the, the mementos and palaces are probably still going to be preferable to tartarus but i really liked the simplicity i guess of tartarus and i think that's the main 
gist of it is that uh, Persona 3 has a lot more simplicity to it and it just gets out of your way. It's like, hey, this is the game. Go fucking play it. Whereas Persona 5 is a lot more of the flash and 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 the glitz and the glamour and it wants to, you know, like really show its ass out, you know, and it wants to like, it wants to go out and, and impress you. You know what I mean? And it's very in your face like that. And to me, it just, I end up wanting to be like, oh my God, take the training wheels off. Let me fucking play. You know, so anyways, that's what I think. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And again, I really do want those tips about doing New Game Plus and stuff like that in the comments if you guys wouldn't mind. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, Persona 3 review and thoughts coming very, very soon. We got more Persona tier lists on the way and stuff. So make sure you guys subscribe up for that. And uh, yeah, man, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.